Hi, welcome everyone to this special community, All Hands. My name is Max Proska. I'm the development team lead at 612 Creative, and I'm here to dispel the myth that Docker is just for DevOps engineers, or only for local dev environments, and only for making proof of concepts. In fact, it's the backbone that's helped me lead the development of over 100 websites from a single shared Next.js code base with just a small team of talented developers. I'm using Next.js because it's what's most familiar to me, but the same takeaways will apply to every web development platform, no matter your stack. Uh, I'll, in I'll include a great resource at the final slide that will show you how to dockerize almost any repo and let you start moving mountains as a small team. A special hello to Next.js developers watching this. If you've clicked on this talk, you're probably familiar with Docker. Uh, you remember watching that Docker in 100 seconds Fireship video on YouTube years ago and thinking to yourself, huh, that's neat. Um, although you never ended up trying it. Actually, deep down, you're ashamed that you don't know anything about Docker. And I don't blame you. I'm a web developer. I'm, I don't do DevOps. How is this black box relevant to solving my problems? And what the heck is Kubernetes? If, if you're anything like me, you took one look at the learning curve and convinced yourself that Docker isn't appropriate for my setup anyways. But I hope I can convince you it is. So to the uninitiated, Docker allows you to write recipes to spin up a 100% reproducible dev and production environment every time. This means you can develop consistently across Mac Intel, Mac Silicon, Windows and Linux teams without worrying about what version of Node or config files each developer has installed on their machine. <coughs> or what's installed on the server for that matter. Uh, one of my favorite parts about Docker is you can target your exact production environment on everyone's local machine no matter how specific or crazy. And if you develop multiple Next.js apps, uh, Next apps in one repository, uh, your productivity as a team can be turbocharged by Docker's companion tool, Compose. So let's get a quick hello world going. And I'll make sure to uh, link to the GitHub repo of the final result in the video description. Uh, first, we'll start by running Create Next app using the official Next.js Docker Compose example I contributed. Oh, good. Then we'll open the readme, run the two development commands, docker build and up, and everything should be running normally on localhost 3000. We can even go into index.tsx, make some changes, and confirm our changes are immediately reflected in the DOM. Uh, and the first cool party trick I can show off is, while this has all been going on, I don't even have Node.js installed locally, and there's no Node modules folder in sight. Now I get to explain the guts of how this is possible. So in the file explorer, uh, in fi file explorer you'll see some .docker files co-located with your Next.js app. These are recipes that tell Docker how to spin up your environment. Got one for development and one for production with two difficulty settings I'll get into later. If we look inside the dev docker file, we can see under the hood it's running Node.js 18 on Alpine, uh, a kind of minimalist Linux operating system that only takes up five megabytes. Uh, just like npm install pulls from npm, docker pulls from docker hub. Uh, so we can swap these out for almost any node version and operating system we desire, almost. But Alpine has earned a solid reputation within the Docker community, and I recommend it for its simplicity and small footprint over, say, a 100 megabyte installation of Docker Debian, Docker Debian Buster, or Bullseye. And uh, here's the same code, but from further away. Now, a quick warning from here on, I'm going to start showing snippets of production grade code. I really wanted the official Next.js example and the final result in the description to be basically production ready. 
uh, all to save you from having to piece together Docker tutorials designed for personal use only in order to arrive at some set of best practices. But I've included lots of comments so you can take it uh, line by line and understand exactly what's going on. Anyways, if you look through your telescope, we have an extremely long-winded version of please copy my Next.js files into Dockerland and run npm install npm run dev. The example is a bit verbose because it seamlessly integrates with your preferred package manager to install, build, and run, uh, whether it be npm, yarn, or pnpm for those who like to install fast. Now here's where Compose comes in. We have some Compose files sitting in the root of our project that tell Docker to give the recipe it's building a name. It points to the recipe, passes some private and public environment variables. It syncs the source and the public directories between your local PC and Docker land. So changes are picked up and hot reloading works. Um, if this connection was severed, nothing would update. And it exposes the port of our Next.js app on the right-hand side to the port 3000 on your PC on the left-hand side. Um, and if port 3000 is already in use locally, you could just change this to 3001. And uh, finally, some networking will let containers talk to each other by name. So everything I've showed you can technically be done without Compose. But the equivalent to this YAML file as a pure Docker run command can get a bit gnarly as your project grows, and especially if you're developing in a mono repo. And in this way, changes to your development and production infrastructure is code, and it can be easily committed to version control. Uh, now, I've left myself a comment to add more containers so we can pick up where the Next.js example leaves off. Okay, so this is getting cool, but I want to demonstrate the true power of Compose by slamming a bunch of technologies into our Compose file. I'll add Postgres and Nginx, uh, create a folder for each with a basic two to five line Docker file. And at this stage, you can add whatever technology you want, frankly, uh, Docker will happily spin them all up. We just have to grab some value from the database display it, and we have something that more closely resembles a full stack app. Another fun trick, if you'll notice, we're not referencing Postgres by localhost. We're referencing it by name. Docker allows apps to talk directly with each other over the Docker network without their actual ports even needing to be exposed to the public internet. So, so far, I hope you can imagine how useful it is to be able to develop locally with a local database at your fingertips. Any flavor or version you want with any config and placeholder data. Um, but in production, it's a good idea to rent a database. You have a permanent data store. Um, this Postgres container is more meant to be destroyed and rebuilt as many times as you like in a day. All right, next. Let's take this into the real world. So still at the uh, root of our project, I'll add a few more Next.js examples to our project to simulate a mono repo. I've already got myself a landing page, but now I want to start a blog and create a search engine because why not? Whatever your SaaS product is, it can go here. And I really can't stress enough how easy having everything in one place makes applying changes across multiple Next.js apps. If you have the ability to edit them all in the same place, to test them together, and to push your changes as one commit, then other developers can review it as one pull request. It's a fantastic strategy to catch bugs from entering production. But. Before we hit run again, you'll see we have a slight problem that all of our apps want to run on port 3000. Uh, now we could tell them to run on different ports, 
But let's talk about a technology um, that can help us handle this a little bit more elegantly called Nginx. So Nginx is a high performant best in class reverse proxy uh, or a kind of firewall that sits in front of a bunch of applications you don't necessarily want to have open to the public internet. Um, it's very useful for interweaving a bunch of Next.js apps um, or even dissimilar technologies like Python and Java apps. If you're part of a small team, Nginx lets us think more security oriented and set all kinds of rules like SSL, hiding headers, basically infinite security rewrite redirect configurability that isn't possible in the next config file or is very hard with some extreme regex that takes a team of PHA students to understand. Now, before uh, those who know Nginx think I'm just going to use a bare bones Nginx config with a naked proxy pass, uh, don't worry. Uh, the real example is backed up with a ton of best practice defaults. Now, let's run all of our three uh, Next.js apps on port 3000. But, oh no! The home page appears fine, but I've encountered a 404 on my blog and search engine. A quick inspection of the network tab in the Chrome DevTools, and it appears our blog on slash blog is trying to load the JavaScript from just slash, our homepage's Next.js app. So let's update our blog and search engines Nginx, Next configs, that is, to tell Next what base URL it's expecting to load JavaScript from. There we go. Three apps running off the same port, just on different pages something more closely resembling a real-world app. All right, next up is production. Super easy to test production locally. It's really as, it's really as easy as running the two production commands from the readme. And with a little extra time to build the final production artifacts, your, port, uh, your app will still be available on port 3000. With this setup, you have very little reason to log on to a server and debug issues there. It's all reproducible locally because it's all the same environment. Now, my production script also holds a fun secret. Some might call it unnecessary, but I love knowing it's there. The Next.js example takes advantage of a feature you probably haven't heard of called Output Standalone combined with a Docker feature called multi-stage builds to create something beautiful. When you marry these two advanced features, Next.js and Docker will copy the bare minimum files necessary to run in production instead of copying the entire node modules folder. And in my testing, the results for small and large apps results in about 85% smaller apps or about 110 megabytes compared to a gigabyte with create next app. That being said, the Docker file for it is fast approaching 100 lines. So I've also included a Docker file and production command without multi-stage builds for developers who don't want to get into the weeds. Um, because when you work in Docker, everything should be easily understandable. For deploy options, Docker can't run in, in Vercel, so by far the fastest and most secure solution is to spin up a Docker one-click app on DigitalOcean, Vulture, Google Cloud Run, or any other VPS that offers them. You want a Linux base with Docker already set up and pre-configured with industry best practices that at the click of a button, everything will be spun up so you just have to SSH in, run the production commands, just as if you were on local. I also recommend getting a managed database from DigitalOcean as well for a persistent data store. This makes our setup super portable. Servers are nothing special and are easily thrown away and replaced. And you aren't locked into a particular vendor. But, but, what are the limitations I've encountered? 
Okay, so part of the reason I really wanted to give this talk is because I partially don't know. Uh, I haven't really seen many companies use Compose in a real world production environment. But at the same time, everything I've shown you is based on a setup I've been meticulously tweaking over the past five years, serving millions of users, is heavily pen tested, has uptimes of 300 plus days, and lets my team work incredibly efficiently. So I'm reasonably certain it's pretty good, but I'll uh, drop a link to the GitHub repo in the video description so people much smarter than me can point out um, what can be improved, and I'll list out any gotchas in the readme. I am aware there are some limits on how scalable this can get. Um, I have run 20 Next.js apps in parallel on a $40 DigitalOcean droplet, droplet um, and the CPU is just chilling. But uh, beyond that, you may need to scale horizontally, aka more droplets, or scale vertically, more likely, aka pay for a more powerful server. Um, especially if you have to prune Docker and build all the containers from, uh, from scratch again. Um, but even that only takes a matter of minutes. And of course, <laughs> the setup suffers from the usual issues ho with hosting multiple websites on one server only. Um, you aren't exactly benefiting from some of the things you get for free with Vercel, like caching uh, without using a CDN. But as for the pros, <laughs> everything old is new again. A single server can be great because you get more control back. Vercel, Netlify, Heroku, all of these services use dynos or temporary file systems that, that, are, that they get cycled and reset every few hours. And since things like SQLite and image uploads are stored on a disk, Anything that you're doing that involves file system changes will be lost on those. So having a single server does solve that. Um, and you don't have to reach for services like AWS or Cloudinary just to save simple images. Uh, and finally, uh, Docker is a small layer. Uh, it's just a recipe and a config file. And it lets you feel confident about wielding really any technology in a 100% reproducible environment. And there's a lot less, I don't know if this is possible, and a lot more flexibility for experimenting with new technologies. There are a lot, a lot more goodies that I just don't have enough time to get into with this talk. You can develop on Next.js with SSL locally. You can add GitHub Actions for continuous deployment and so much more. My, my team has fell in love with working with Compose because there's no limit to the cool and experimental things you can add. And you should love the code base that you work in. There. I, I hope you've all enjoyed hearing the possibilities Docker and Compose can bring to development and production. Just get out there and try it. Start adding Docker to your repo today. And if you're unaware where to start, I highly recommend checking out and starring uh, the awesome Docker Compose repo on GitHub. It is an awesome springboard to, to Dockerize your app no matter your stack. If it exists, there is a Docker image of it. No exceptions. <laughs> Thanks for watching my talk. My name is Max Proska. Feel free to reach out to me, and, and I'm excited to hear from other developers who use Compose in production. Good luck.